I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 31st of May, 2023, and this is my vlog of living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I've been asked to give a really tight budget for those who are single travelers looking to move to Nicaragua. See just how cheaply they can live. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. So for some people looking to move to Nicaragua, this may be about an economical decision, looking for a place where they can just go a lot farther on their budget. And so we're gonna look today at just how cheaply we can go. And before we really dig into that, I wanna talk a little bit about how people in Nicaragua actually live on their own. And it is common to see people who are surviving on a budget of less than $200 per month as an individual. Let's give some context to this. Yes, it is common to have to do so. No one does so because they want to, and they often do so with government and familial support. So just because a Nicaraguan is able to do it does not mean that you will be able to do so at the same level. You will find that trying to live as an expat in Nicaragua at $200 a month will one, most likely get you kicked out of the country because you will not qualify as someone who's actually able to sustain themselves. You'll be running too close to the line. That is simply too small of a budget. If you're only spending 200 but have the ability to spend more, that is different. If you're only able to spend 200, eventually that's going to catch up with you. For the most part, those who are running that close to the line are living with family with no rent. They are eating basically just rice and beans, maybe eggs most days, and that is being cooked and shared between a family, not something that they're preparing on their own. So even the cooking cost, for example, of the gas for heating up the stove is being shared among multiple people. Electricity is limited to lights in the evening. There's no television, no air conditioning, and possibly no fans. We're talking about very, very minimal survivability. And while you could do it, in theory, you're gonna be in a dangerous position. And Nicaraguans have free healthcare because this is their country. As a foreigner who is living here as a tourist or as a resident, you're not gonna have access to that healthcare. And so you're not gonna be able to avail yourself of free healthcare. Absolutely affordable, amazing healthcare for sure, but not free, at least not all the time with complete reliability in the way that a Nicaraguan would. So you have to be very careful that when you're looking at their budgets that it is different than what your budget would be. So what kind of numbers are we realistically going to look at for budgets for real people who are looking to actually move to Nicaragua and not pretend that they're a local and not try to actually live on an impossible budget? What is a reasonable budget to work with? Let's dig into that. The first item on our list is going to be housing. This is the thing everyone thinks of and it's going to answer the bulk of your questions. You have to have a place to live and you can't just live in a hotel the entire time. You're going to have to have an apartment of some sort, assuming you're going to do a rental. Of course, if your long-term goal is to stay in Nicaragua and you really are confident that that's what you're going to do, then for, by all means, consider buying a home. And even brand new construction in nice developments, you can buy a home for under $16,000, even here in Leon, which is far from the cheapest city. If you go to cheaper cities, I assume you can shave even a little bit off of that, but obviously very little. So we're gonna say that the absolute cheapest you could buy a brand new constructed home in the standard Nicaraguan style, it's gonna be around $15,000, but you really gonna have to hunt around and choose your city based on where you're able to find that. You're not gonna have any flexibility. You're probably gonna end up in some place like Hinotega, which is beautiful and could be a great option if you're looking to lower your cost, especially because you will generally feel no need to have something like air conditioning there, and that will over overall could lower your cost of living significantly. But in most places, 16,000, maybe 17,000 is going to get you into new construction. That means that there are cheaper options. And I don't know how much cheaper you're gonna be able to go, but realistically, if the thing you care about is having a tiny place, basically a small personal apartment that you can live in, and you're willing to put in some of the work to building that, you may be able to build a house today for around 13 or 14,000, maybe even cheaper, but you're going to be getting very, very difficult uh, to get that cheap. But obviously if you pick a place that has extremely 
extremely low cost land, you go for very little land, you go for a very small house, you do some of the work yourself, you're getting down to pretty much just the cost of materials. Theoretically, you could go quite a bit less. The point being, you could buy or construct a house for very low cost and then have essentially no housing costs going forward. If that's something that you wanna do, that could be a way that you lower your long-term cost, but your immediate cost obviously will be a, bit, be a bit higher. But if you can save up and do that, or you have the money already prepared to do so, that could reduce this budget. We're gonna start with a working number of $150 per month. Now, in what we have seen here in Leon, that is enough to get you that 16, actually a little bit higher, like an $18,000 house that is already built, ready to go, two bedrooms, one bath in a really nice neighborhood, very small, only about 360 square feet, but completely livable with your own kitchen, backyard, area to store things, room for working, room for sleeping, uh, a little tiny living room space where you could set up and basically a quite nice small two bedroom apartment just one bath. Of course, it's not a place where you're likely to do a lot of entertaining, but even that you could do. That's where we are at 150 or even 145 a month here in Leon, in areas with good public transportation. So you really have the ability to potentially live there comfortably. These are houses that people on much larger budgets still look at because they simply make a lot of sense. Can you go down from that? Yes, absolutely. I know here in Sutiava, I have seen decent month to month rental apartments for just $120 per month. That's only a one bedroom, one bath, so you're giving something up, but a $30 per month saving, while it may not sound like a ton, is a very large percentage. That's roughly 20% off the cost of the housing. Can you go cheaper than that? Yes, you absolutely can. I have seen housing in the city getting into things like student housing, very small apartments, getting down to as low as $90 per month. Uh, and I've seen small houses advertised in certain parts of the country in the 80s of dollars per month. And in theory, they exist even lower. I've heard rumors of places renting in the 60s. Now, once you're into those kinds of numbers, you're getting into very rough conditions. At $90 here in Leon, you're looking at getting an absolutely tiny room, a private bathroom, a shared kitchen space, and way less than 360 square feet, more like 80 square feet. This is just enough room to put in a bed, maybe a small table, a tiny dresser. You're not gonna have any space to do anything, but it did come with a little bit of common space. If you wanna see an example of that, you can see the videos of my office that I did last year in Labo Rio. That was student housing. The bathroom was perfectly serviceable. The room was normally set up to be a bedroom. We had many guests who came and stayed in that for long periods of time, not my office, but identical spaces next to it. Very, very tight living, very little space to work with, but also extremely easy to deal with. It's if, even if you want to put in air conditioning, which of course provides quite a bit of expense, it costs extremely little to run that air conditioning because the space is tiny, but you generally don't need to. Generally, you're just going to run a fan or something. These places are designed for you not to spend a lot of time in them. So you have to think about that though. How do you plan to spend your time when you're here? And that will affect your budget. If you're planning on being out all the time and just walking around, and the only reason you do anything is to walk and explore and come back and live and sleep in your tiny house, then something like that could work just fine. But if it's going to make you go out and spend money at restaurants, that could throw your budget out of whack if we're talking about really tight budgets. So realistically on the low end, we're gonna say about $90 is the lowest that you could go here and 150 is a number you should probably target. 120 is very reasonable, however. So if you are in a position where you absolutely have to reduce your budget to handle that, that's a realistic number that you as an expat can get into without a problem. Getting into things that are like $90, you're gonna be searching very, very hard and probably be quite unhappy with what you find in the long run, but the options do exist. But I have seen places that look quite nice advertising at $84, and if that meets your needs, great those things are out there the more easy it is to find a place the more targeted it is towards the middle classes and expats and the more pricey it will be so take that into consideration as you get cheaper it gets harder and harder to find but that doesn't mean that gems aren't out there waiting for you 
With your tiny house, you're going to have a power bill, and I'm going to estimate for this purpose to say it's going to be $50. That gives you plenty under most circumstances to have lights, power a computer, keep a TV on when you're using it, not run air conditioning, but even if you did that from time to time, you'd probably fall well within this envelope. Here at my large house where we have lots of people, we're able to keep that under $90 almost every month. We're generally in the 80s, and that's with many air conditioners and many computers running. So 50 is a conservative number. Now, I want to mention, we just talked about the house price. I said 150 and now we're adding 50 on for power. That takes you to a total of 200. But when I was talking about the student housing of 90, that one includes the power in a place that doesn't have air conditioning. So that would give you an entire budget of $90 for that incredibly small space instead of more or less 200 for a house with power. Of course, you can get under $50 for power if you're being good about keeping your lights off, only using LED bulbs, not running a computer when you don't need to, only charging your phone at cafes if you want to, whatever, you can do things to reduce that price. If you don't have air conditioning, it's pretty easy to keep that down. Just be aware that the things you run are going to use power and it's easy to rack up bills when you don't think about it. Things like like your refrigerator have to run a little bit harder here because it is warmer. Not a ton, but a little bit, just be aware. In the student housing, you would generally not have a refrigerator, for example, or if you did, it'd be a very small one, not a full size, just one you would slip under your desk so you can keep a few drinks and a few small food items. The cheaper you get with your housing though, the harder it is to store things, the harder it is to buy in bulk, the harder it is to cook for yourself. So keep that in mind that you may end up in a situation, as many people do who live in student housing, of going out to eat instead of cooking at home, and that can offset the advantage of that budget a little bit. So things you have to plan on. But for power, $50 is really a safe number, I think. It's going to be extremely rare for someone living on their own and putting in any effort in at all to keeping the cost down to run afoul of that and often you'll come in much lower. As I've said a few times, I do know people who lived in a much larger place, were conscious about their power, did work from home, so they were there with fans, with lights, with computers, and kept it at under $20 for a month, so you can certainly find ways to do that. And again, if you're looking at living in some place like I am in Leon, you're going to need air conditioning part of the time. We are extremely hot, Chinandega even hotter. But if you're looking at Managua, going without air conditioning isn't that absurd. And if you're looking at Matagalpa, Esteli, or Notega, going without air conditioning is almost a no-brainer. Very few people are going to look to put in air conditioning up there. Yes, expats putting in really expensive new homes, they're going to put in air conditioning by default without thinking twice. But those people who are looking to buy existing homes or live like a Nicaraguan in any way whatsoever are going to immediately notice that air conditioning is something you just assume you don't have there because most of the time you don't need it. It is so much cooler than here and so reliably the same temperature year-round that it just isn't a factor. So, Keep that in mind, not only are rents and uh, purchasing property and most everything else cheaper in the highlands, but your need for power is lower in the highlands as well. Not only do you not need an air conditioner as much, that also means you don't need a fan as much. And by not running a fan, that's another of your large ticket electrical items. Nothing like air conditioning, but more than a light bulb. And it's something people often don't think about that running fans uses more power than they normally assume. If you can just open your windows and let the breeze come through, you're gonna get far less expensive cooling very effectively. Our largest budget item has to be food. There's no getting around it. Food is going to be the thing that costs you the most and is going to impact you the most for your lifestyle. For this, I am budgeting $10 per day. Now, keep in mind, this is for someone who is being extremely budget conscious. This is not for what you would generally want to target if you had a choice. This is if you had to shave your budget dramatically, where could you do it? Food is one of those places. It's one of the places that can expand the most and one of the places that can contract the most, but it can't go away. At $10, I think you have enough buffer that you can live effectively pretty well. You'll need to be careful, you will need to plan, but you can eat healthily and relatively easily. You can still go out to eat when you need to, uh, and you can cook at home when you need to. It gives you flexibility. If you're traveling in any way, whether on foot or by bus, you're going to need to be able to eat, and if you were completely budget-bound to eating at home, that would not let you. At $10, you can pretty much go anywhere in the country and you're okay. And if you need to, you could spend several days eating extremely simply at home to save up to go out for a nice meal here or there, even in Managua. My dog has decided to join me here. He is hanging out on the show. He just came up and stood by me. Yes. So, 
at ten dollars this means that a meal at a Fritanga for example is often about three dollars and very few people need to get Fritanga meals three times in a day but if you decided to that would only take you to nine dollars and you'd have a dollar left over for splurging at some point in the future. And keep in mind, when you're only talking about $3 a meal, if you're saving a dollar a day, that means you're saving $7 a week. Every week you have nearly an entire extra day of spending that allows you to go out for something special. A really nice Italian pasta dinner, uh, even one with salmon would only take two weeks to save up for, and that's an entire meal that you're paying for extra, not one that you're uh, um, having to save up for uh, separate from your budget. You would not actually go out and eat a fourth meal one of those days. You would use three dollars out of one of those meals. So it's more like a week and a half to be able to save up. And that's for salmon. If I was going out for a nice pasta dinner at a normal restaurant here in town, it would be a lot closer to six or seven dollars as opposed to eleven or twelve for salmon in Managua. So in theory, you could be doing a little bit of maneuvering with your food and be able to eat decently well for a single person even on $10 a day. It's really not that bad. If you absolutely had to, you could reduce below $10 a day, but you're starting to push your luck a little bit. I would say at the low end, the lowest you could reasonably go is about $6 a day, taking you to around $180, $185 per month, whereas at $10 a day, we're assuming a little bit over $300 per month. It's a very small budget for food, uh, and you don't want to take too many risks with that. You want to make sure that you're always able to eat and eat healthily, but those are numbers that are realistic. If you start getting below that, it's going to be very, very difficult. Now again, Nicaraguans do it all the time. They may do it by eating nothing but rice and beans or rice, beans, and eggs most days. Uh, they'll supplement with fresh fruits and vegetables that they're able to get for pennies at the market, uh, and that's basically all they get. The rice and beans and eggs are the sources of the protein that they're going to be working with. So if that's something that you you think sounds great and some people do then more power to you you have some healthy options at effectively no cost and you're going to get way below even the six dollars per day but realistically most people aren't going to be able to do that and you can't really plan for it if you come down and test out the waters and decide that that is something that works for you you can cook it yourself you don't need to go somewhere to get it even going out to get it you can go to a frittanga and get bags of gallo pinto which is the rice and beans already made for you you can get pre-fried eggs for uh, about a dollar, dollar fifty, often for a meal, you could buy enough for say an entire day and just dole it out to yourself throughout the day. Uh, some people don't want to eat three meals a day; maybe you only want to eat two. That makes it easier and easier each time you do a separate meal. Obviously, you're racking up the cost a little bit. So, a little bit of planning and a little bit of knowing yourself and a little bit of sampling the food here and putting those pieces together, you can determine what kind of budget makes for you. But if you're looking for a guide, I'm going to say ten dollars per day, and that gives you a I'm being very conservative, and yet I can still go eat most places and do things that I want to do. And that will let you do things like buy snacks on the street. You want to get some chips from the Fritangas. You want to go to an Asada from time to time. You want to grab Casillos while you're out on the road. Not a problem. All those things will fit within your budget as long as you don't do them every day. And even that, if you gave up something else, you probably could do those things every day, but that would probably not be what you wanted to do. Telecommunications costs cannot be overlooked. Internet is going to be about $40 per month. In some parts of the country, you can get that into the 30s, but let's assume you're going to need to spend 40. At 40, you can get television, internet, and a telephone all from a cable provider such as Claro. They have good packages for this. These are 100 megabit per second packages, so these are very good. You're not gonna be like, oh, I've got internet, but it just barely works. No, this is a good service at a good price, so you're in good shape there. And that is something that may be optional for you. Probably not, but for a few of you, it's actually going to be something you may not need. So this is a $40 budget item that you might be able to simply skip. However, going without internet and television is gonna leave your home Home life probably pretty boring but if you're only looking to spend your time at home doing gardening reading a book or whatever you may decide that this is simply something you don't need many Nicaraguans those who are working in these tight budgets where we talk about uh, around about $200 per month obviously they're doing so without this type of internet at home so it is very common to do without it here however very few of them are happy with the fact that they don't have it and they certainly wish that they did but it is a place that could be optional. So immediately consider that might be something that you want to do without. If you're almost never home and you don't do things online other than check your email or something really simple, maybe you don't need that. And if you don't have a computer or anything to hook to the internet, well, then obviously it may not make any sense for you. It all depends on your budget and how your lifestyle is, but consider that $40 is a good price, almost guaranteed. It'll be enough for you wherever you are in the country, but it could be something you just don't need. 
Now the other budget that you have for telecommunications is your cell phone. And I'm simply going to assume that you are going to have a need a cell phone. If you are going to do without a cell phone, I don't know what you're going to do. Life is going to get very tough in a lot of ways. You need one, but this costs under $15 a month and gives you good internet access. If your goal is to simply have a nice phone or actually a very cheap phone, you can get decent ones for a little over $100 here. And if you're getting closer to $200, you're in great shape. Uh, for it's about $12 per month and that is to keep a lot of service you will have a phone number you will have unlimited WhatsApp you'll have unlimited uh, Instagram you'll have unlimited Facebook a lot of those services you'll have tons of and you can just use and use and use YouTube you'll get a lot of um, and then general internet for your email or whatever you'll have quite a bit of data now if you're gonna download a lot of media that doesn't fall into any of those categories and isn't Netflix that's also unlimited um, then you're going to need to to consider how much data usage you're going to go through and it could be a little bit more expensive and you just need to look at those numbers and see what you would actually use but for most people here they never top what they would use for uh, six dollars every 15 days and so it comes out to about twelve dollars a month and they get really good service on their phones of course if you're in a cafe or anything like that you hook to the Wi-Fi and you can download anything that you need do your updates whatever all for the price of a cup of coffee uh, so there, there's strategies to make that work if you don't have the internet at home and you want to have the cell phone of course if you have internet at home and just a phone and uh, you're you're using the phone service Tigo or Claro just for when you're out and about then you can download anything you want watch off of any service you want as much as you want um, on your cell phone and that's covered in the forty dollars for the Wi-Fi so on the low end we're looking at about twelve to fifteen dollars per month if you're living just on the phone and on the high end of this reasonable budget we're looking at about $55 for unlimited cell service more or less and your Wi-Fi television and a landline phone all for your house which could hook to a TV could hook to a computer could be there for guests whatever lots of options lots of flexibility all at a pretty good budget number our last budget items are pretty small and very fluctuating one is water sewer and all those municipal supplies that come from what we call here the Alcadia I'm going to budget for this $20 because that's probably going to be overkill for almost anyone who's living in this size house or apartment on this kind of budget. It's also worth noting, again, like the $90 student apartment, this is included. So you don't have to pay for any of this. The $90 includes this, but if you have your own house, you're going to have to pay something. I bet $20 is very high for that. You're probably more like five to 10, but just in case I want to leave you guys enough buffer in case something goes wrong and you have a water bill that you don't expect and you're like, I didn't have this budgeted. Why didn't Scott tell me yes in case you leave your water on and water the lawn overnight you need to have a little bit extra in there just in case so we're gonna say $20 but that's pretty safe and the last thing is transportation again I'm gonna say $20 per month this includes taxis buses and whatever now you're going to need to either stay home and not go anywhere or you're gonna to need to learn how to use the public transportation very effectively that includes things like the city buses and the UCA buses and the chicken buses those will get you around the country for very little money and will allow you to actually go a fair number of places except we don't have a budget for hotel rooms so keep that in mind but you could go to a large number of places by bus on this transportation budget and be in pretty good shape and you could be able to go to the grocery store run around the city and do things that you need to do depending on where you live and what you want to do for that money now what we have not included in this overall budget is anything like entertainment you're gonna to have to figure that out and it's gonna be completely dependent on you if you're not someone who's going to go out and pay for entertainment then great this budget is for you we also didn't include health care if you're a local that is included for free if you're like me my budget is so low for health care that it is effectively free I have spent something like ten dollars in the last eight years so uh, where do you budget that? But if you're someone with health concerns or you want to have some protection, you need to be aware that there could need to be a budget for that. But your health care will be super cheap compared to anywhere else. You don't need to have insurance, at least while you are a tourist here and learning the budgets. By the time you are a resident, you will not need guidance from me on your budget. Uh, and uh, in many cases, it's simply going to be ridiculously cheap or never have a cost at all. If you have enough money set aside in case something happens, then you really don't need to spend anything unless something does, in which case simply have that buffer ready. So when we take all those numbers and we put them together, what do we come out to? We come out to a high side of about $600 per month. Remember, we could reduce the housing, we could eliminate the electric, we could eliminate the water, uh, and we could reduce the food. So we could bring it down to below 500 
possibly quite a bit to more like 400 or 450. This is double or a little bit more than double what many Nicaraguans survive on, but they're not paying rent, they have family to support them, they're sharing costs, and they're not living well. So we don't want to try to get to those numbers, that is not our goal, but to have a realistic number of what you could live on and live decently well in a beautiful, safe country with great weather and beautiful things to go see and do for extremely low cost. You just want to go for walks, you just want to take photos. We don't have a budget for you to buy cameras, but if you already have one, go take lots of photos. Use your camera phone, take photos with that, that's budgeted. Great, talk to your friends, go visit, use it as a launch pad for other things. $600 is a really realistic number that's gonna allow you to have some choices in food, some choices in housing, some choices in where your money goes, and still be able to live. At 400 to 450, you're going to be taking what you can get for that, but if you're a person who only has 425, $450 per month, and you have to make it work within that average, Nicaragua can make that happen. You don't have to go to Southeast Asia to enable that. And keep in mind that your flights from most places to Nicaragua are pretty affordable. You don't want to be going in and out every day. That's going to ruin your budget real fast. But one flight to Asia is going to be months of living in Nicaragua just in the flight, and that will offset an awful lot of lower cost living somewhere else. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Questions like this, absolutely get down there in the comments. Let me know what you think of this information, what you think of the budgets, what questions you have, what things do you want me to talk about. That's what that's for, or just say hi, whatever. Let me know how you like the music and the bump, those kinds of things. And if you'd like to support the channel, kind of have a link right up here, buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott L. Miller. That helps make the channel possible, helps us to afford all of the things we need to make this possible. And if you're looking for assistance in relocating to Nicaragua, Central America, you need someone to give you a tour, just talk on the phone, work through ideas with you, shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com. As always, tell your friends, share on social media, post the links wherever you can, and I will see all of you tomorrow.